Hi, I'm Stephen. Paul. Danny. Stuart. Kerry. Nigel. Viv. Nick. Giles. Stephen. Robbie. Chris. John. Nick. Verity. Tom. Julie. Murray. Hugo. Graham. Ruthie. William. Martin. Jamie. Andrew. Cecilia. James. Malcolm. My name's Russell. And I'm Jordan. And this is Buckley, the dog. Oh. <laughs> Benoit, also known as Vanity. I grew up in Essex. Stevenage. Loughborough in Leicestershire. Preston. Eastbourne. And that's right next to Brighton. And I wish it was Brighton. Very middle class Surrey and Kent. I grew up in a very coastal town in Australia, um, where if you weren't a surfer or a footballer, then you were a fag. I went to a very um, strict Christian school. No homosexual activity whatsoever. It wasn't that no one liked me, it's just that I didn't really have any close friends. I just didn't belong anywhere. and I just felt like a complete outsider. At that point, it's no longer acceptable for a boy to play Barbies or to to stay inside and play dress-ups with the girls. To be stood on your own in the corner of the playground, or to be stood on your own in the corridor is like less than being alive. I felt totally, utterly alone. Because being straight is the norm in society, just it's the majority, you grow up assuming that you're straight. Every story I heard was a straight story. Every piece of history was a straight piece of history. I didn't say that I was gay for a really long time thought, well, obviously I'm bisexual because I still must fancy girls because that's what is the norm. I said that I just fall in love with people. I just fall in love with people. Luckily, I don't mind whether they're male or female. And then it was only when I was about 17 that I went, actually, I don't even fancy girls anymore. I just fancy boys. I've just always known um, that there was something different about me and I've always known that I, I liked boys in a different way than I liked girls. I used to wish I had a little watch and on my watch, it would give me the information about the inner thoughts of all the people around me so that I could try and work out who was like me. Well, I felt like everyone knew how I was feeling, but they didn't, and it was just me going through it in my head, and it was me beating myself up about it. I was seven years old, and my mum's friend, called Peter, came round. He was such a glamorous creature. He just walked in, waltzed in. I'd never encountered... Um, a gay man before and it kind of stirred something up so deep in me and I was terrified absolutely terrified and I said to my mum mummy can that man never ever come round ever again I think that thing kind of thing can scare you when you're confronted by something you know you are I just left it I didn't I didn't bother with it and I thought maybe it'd go away but I'm glad it didn't I can remember a young gay acquaintance of my parents being killed in the car crash uh, when I was a teenager, and my parents solemnly announcing that it was probably for the best that he was dead because he was going to have such an unhappy life. I wasn't allowed to watch Elton John on the television, or if Freddie Mercury came on the television, that was a weird thing and I shouldn't watch it, and just sort of you know, um, an underlying problem that they thought that I might have. I remember praying at night um, for Jesus to change me, for him to make me straight. And what happened with me was what happens with a lot of us, I guess, is that gay kid finds the fat girl and then you sort of become you become best friends and you you then go through it together i remember being chased into the toilets and being called queer not of name calling because my name's stephen Mir, so Mir rhymed with queer i got beaten up a couple of times i got chucked in a holly bush they used to spit at me and it was just the most horrendous just humiliating thing really. When I was about 14, a group of three guys dressed up as me on Halloween by putting brown on their nose and wearing t-shirts uh, with my name on it. Yeah, emotional, mental, physical bullying, all of the above. I never went to the toilet at school. I would hold it in the entire day just so that I wouldn't get caught in the toilets by this gang of boys. It was Valentine's Day and um, a card got delivered to my house. In the card, was a homophobic poem. My mum was seeing what was happening at school just by reading that poem. I kind of came to a conclusion that I would just never meet anyone. I would, I would desexualise myself and just become some sort of androgynous being. And I remember thinking that. I remember thinking, I will be the friend. I will be people's friend, but I won't be involved with anyone because it's too complicated. I spent many years being absolutely tortured and bullied and um, 
and I suffered in silence for a long time um, until I was 15 and nine months and I attempted suicide. Now, I know that I didn't want to die, but I just needed people to know how much pain I was in. The leaders in the church uh, would say things and it would get back to me or they'd say things in front of my face, not realizing that I was gay. Um, and that, would, that got me down. I was suicidal at that point. I started dating lots of boys and I was very unhappy. I was very anorexic. And at 18, during my A-levels, I decided that I actually just didn't want to, to be anymore because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't think that my parents would want me if, if I wasn't normal, if I wasn't going to have kids and be married. And so I took quite a lot of pills. And I remember very much sitting in my bedroom thinking, no one will miss me, no one will care, you know, I'm not going to have a family, so it's not like, it's, it's not like that I'm going to leave a gap in the world. And my little brother found me and called my dad and went through the whole thing, the hospital and the stomach pumping and being kept in a psychiatric unit overnight and thinking, I'd... I don't want to be unhappy, and I think I'd always clung to the unhappiness because that was something I knew. I knew what that was. I knew that was something tangible. I was waiting for the day when my life would begin because I always had a feeling like it hadn't begun. I just made sure that I ploughed on because I knew that I would find people that understood me somewhere, uh, and I did. I discovered a completely different world that bared no relationship to the world that I'd come from. It had no, they didn't have the same rules or the same thought processes or the same way of behaving. It wasn't until I left Lacombe and went to Edmonton, went to a theater arts program and kind of got out of this little bubble that I realized that there's, there's more to life. What got me through high school was having a focus and having a passion. And I would pour all of my energy into that. And for me, it was theatre. I was very, very fortunate. I went to a stage school. So once there, I suddenly went, my God, there are other people like me. I'm not alone. And it was like a cloud had lifted for me, really. It was a positive thing and it was a joyful thing. I met a friend uh, who became a bit more than a friend and uh, literally said, uh, you are gay. And it took him to say that for me to uh, actually go, yeah. I remember going into a news agent's to buy my first gay magazine and I stood by the magazine for about 10 minutes waiting to reach, to just reach up and get the magazine. It showed me a world that, that was out there but I just couldn't see it yet. It was a little promise of what was to come. And as soon as I left the adolescent world behind, my uniqueness and my difference made me someone special. It was kind of, I felt like it was God's way of saying, you've been through crap, you've been through shit, you've put up with that and you've come out of it. And now this is what I'm giving you. I am more than a gay person. I am actually a person. I don't see the label, I see the person. And to, to me, we're all the same, same people. My sexuality doesn't define me. It's a trait of my personality. It's not a definition of who I am as a person. Music, for me, is who I am as a person. I remember thinking, that's what you have to do, that's what gay people do. They go to these, these gay clubs and you, know, and you wear this type of clothes and you, <laughs> and you speak a certain way. Um, and very quickly I realised you don't. You don't have to at all, you can just absolutely be yourself. And um, I just love a pub. Gay comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes and colours. and you know, You don't have to be anything, you don't have to be a certain way, you don't have to act a certain way, you don't have to like a certain kind of things. And also, you know what, if you do, that's fine too. If anybody tells you for reasons of religion that homosexuality means you're less valuable, it's, it couldn't be further from the truth. Because God is gay, and he's straight, and he's she, and she's black, and she's white, and she's everything, and homosexuality doesn't have a diminished value to heterosexuality. It got better for me, and it can get better for you. Um, so just hang in there, and you'll see that there's something really, really beautiful on the other side, um, surrounded by love and friendship and laughter. Um, 
and theater. <laughs> I think as you get older, you get more comfortable in yourself. And you can look at those people who, who put you down. Look at yourself as a, when you're younger, and you're putting yourself down and think, well, you know, I've done this. I've, I've made this amount of things out of my life. I just think back to myself then and think how miraculous it is that, that I'm here and that I'm not incarcerated in some asylum somewhere, which uh, was predicted for me when I was a, when I was a child. Uh, professionals who, who saw me then thought that my future was going to be grim. And it's not. It's not at all. All my friends are gay. If, if there was no gay people in the world, then life would be so boring. And we might need you. You could turn out to be the next Tchaikovsky or Sondheim, and the world would be a much less rich place without you. Just think and honestly ask yourself if, if there's no one that you can talk to. There's always someone. There are thousands, if not millions, of people that feel exactly the same way as you. When I was 14, I, I could never imagine talking to my parents about boys. And now... My mom's asking me if I'm dating or how things are going with so-and-so or such-and-such. It's brilliant. My parents are completely different now. They've totally changed. Um, probably most of their best friends are gay. Um, and uh, that's an important thing to, uh, to realise is that, um, is that you know, everybody grows, everybody's views develop. Older people who might be watching this, who've escaped, who've got out, who've got lives of their own, you, we weren't born with rules, but we were born with responsibilities. We're also gay fathers and gay grandparents to all these gay children out there. And we have to look after them and help them and guide them and take care of them and repay the debt that was given to us. And life is good. Life could be terrible, of course, because it'll be heartaches and love affairs. It'll be painful and wonderful, but you will be loved and you will love. And if you're gay, that's your aspect of humanity. That's your expression of it. And there's nothing you can do about it except breathe into it, listen to it, give it space, see where it wants to go, um, and trust that life has you in its, in its hands. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay to be different. At no point um, has anybody ever cared what my sexuality is unless there's been uh, a twinkle in their eye. I'm so glad that I persevered and I pushed on through when times were hard and I felt a bit alone and there wasn't anyone to help. I am so glad because I have the most beautiful, beautiful partner and we have a brilliant life. The best life I could ever have wished for. I love my career, I love the people I work with and I feel very supported. I'm the director of the National Theatre in London and there is absolutely no better job for a director in the theatre to have than that. I've been nominated for Olivier's five times and I've won two. And as far as my personal life goes, uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it, it's not perfect. I don't know anybody whose is perfect, but it's, uh, its imperfections have absolutely nothing to do with my sexuality. I've been nominated for a Tony. I'm in a serious intimate relationship with an adult and I have been for five and a half years. I've just bought a flat with that person. I've won an LA Critics Award. Someone made me a godfather um, of the most beautiful baby in the world. Fact. I'm with a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person who sort of completes me, really. So I guess I'm not that unpopular now. It's so, so worth it. I can't even tell you. Just... Hold on. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. It really does get better. Believe me, it gets better. It gets better. It gets much better. I promise you, it gets better. It does get better. It gets better. It does get better. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Trust me, it does get better. It gets better. It gets better. It gets, it gets better. better. It gets better. It gets better. Believe it. It gets so much better. That's a that's a song from the show. So much better. Hello. Yeah. Honestly, it does get better. If you need support, Stonewall can point you in the right direction. Call the free and confidential information line on 08000 50 20 20.